Google's local service ads is a way for advertisers to collect leads directly from the ad. And because it says service within the ad name, yes, you need to be a services type business in order to even apply to run these types of ads. So we're going to show you the actual setup process. It can be pretty lengthy. We're going to jump around a little bit because some of the steps take a few days to get approved. Once you do get approved though, you will get a green Google trusted check mark within your ad that can help build trust. And when you are collecting leads, they can either be phone calls, or if you're in the US or Canada messages, you're only going to be charged whenever a lead occurs. So let's jump in and we'll show you the few different ways that you can set up your local services account. One way to set up Google local services ads is to come to this page. I'm showing it on the screen right now. It's ads.google.com slash local dash services dash ads. So you can click on one of the four phone number links that they have on the screen right now. There, a Google rep will help you get set up. Or you can click on one of the get started buttons. Now, whether you're calling or trying to fill out the form, this is an ideal route if you are the owner of your local services business and you're looking to run things yourself. You don't have any Google Ads accounts created already. So you would just come here and go step by step. And the process is pretty easy. I'm just going to enter in state, zip code, and then you can choose a job category. We see a variety of options of what Google considers to be services. Animal rescue, beauty school, dance instruction, a lot of repair services, handyman, there's home theater, law, pest control. So you can go through the list yourself. I just chose one option so we can get going, but you can pretty much assume that if you don't see your service category as one of these options, you're probably not going to be eligible. Let's see if they let me go through by just picking a bunch of random things. And as the business owner, you would then fill out all of these business details. There's the business name, and if you have a different registration or legal name with the government, highly recommended to fill that in. Business phone, optional website, another field, highly recommend fill in. More information you can give Google, better chances you're going to get approved. And then it's asking for owner information, how many workers there are, the year that you were founded, your business location, consider this your admin office, where you're legally registered. And then there's a different question at the bottom. Is this a location that customers can visit, like a store or an office, a brick and mortar location? Don't be deterred if your answer is no. Google understands that there are many service businesses where someone runs it out of their house. People can't visit it. Heck, the guy who just stained my deck did it out of his house, did a wonderful job. And he uses Google local services ad. So it's okay to answer no. But if you choose yes for this specific question, you could be shown on Google Maps. So that's another helpful placement. And then when you click next, you could see you'd have to set up your service area, your service types, business hours, and then you would get a chance to preview your ad. And this is just one way to set up a business. As I said before, this is probably ideal if you haven't done Google Ads before, you're the owner of your own business, and you're looking to manage things yourself. And then we can talk about the other scenario of how you can create local service ad profiles. In this scenario would be if you are an agency and you're gonna manage the local service accounts for your clients. Now, I've never been in-house, so this has always been the way I have managed these types of accounts. And I've seen this screen look a little bit different depending on which account you're on. So to get to this screen, I went to this URL, which you are seeing right now, ads.google.com slash local services. I went to managed accounts. And in this case, we have a client who wants to start running these. We're going to test it because only paying for conversions is appealing to them. So we're going to give it a shot, even though we are running a variety of regular Google ads campaigns. So I'm going to go to the plus button here and look at creating a new account. As I just said, we are already running Google ads for them. So I could go through the new advertiser setup, similar to what we did in the first option to set up one of these accounts, but we can do it for an existing account that we already manage. Most of the information stays the same, but there we see we can enter in the Google ads account number. So I'm going to fill in all of this information, create the account, and then we'll jump on to the next step. Even from the agency setup side, the setup process was pretty much the same. Still had to fill out owner's information, still had to select a list of services, and that's going to be different depending on which service category you originally selected. Then I had to select business hours, and once that was saved, we got to this screen for business verification. One thing I did have to blur out was that it does list the name of the company, and underneath the name of the company is the customer ID, essentially our Google Ads ID. Next, you see a list of options that we'll need to finish before we can get this Google screened badge that's part of our ads. So the first one that I have blurred out 
is very specific to this industry, so I can't show you it, but I have to provide specific license information for this industry, pretty much to prove that we're legit. After that, you can see we need to submit proof of insurance. If you wanna get an understanding of why proof of insurance is required, there's your answer. So you can go ahead and attach a file, then you can go through the verification process. If I X out of that, Next, you'll see that we will need customer reviews. Nothing that we need to do here because we already submitted address information, phone number information, website, zip code. Google is going to look for our business on Google Maps. Now, this particular company already has location extensions already synced from their business account into Google Ads. I'm not sure if that makes a difference or not, but I'm sure it helps. If you don't have customer reviews yet, you can look at your link options had to blur out a part of it and you can send that link to your current customers and any review you get from those links will be shown as verified reviews. Next, we'll wanna set our budget. Scroll down a little bit so we can see our options. It is a weekly budget and it's good to hone in on this section right here. However much a lead cost is gonna be depending on how much other businesses are willing to pay. We don't handle the bidding, so you can choose from one of the options that they recommend or you can set your own budget. Yeah, of course. Of course, they're gonna to try to jump it up. It's saying for this amount, I could get eight to 20 leads per week. What happens if we bring it down? And you can see if I try to bring it down, it's showing me what the minimum budget is. So in this client's case, I have no choice. Don't have a ton of spend, so I gotta use what's there. I'm gonna save that option. So there we go, we have the budget set. I'm good with that. And next we can go on to billing information. Because we linked our Google Ads local services account with our pre-existing Google Ads account, we don't have to set up additional billing information. It's going to use whatever we have in place within Google Ads. But you can see you can update your billing information here or if you've gone the first route where you're creating everything brand new, everything's a new account, here's where you would enter your billing information. So now this is where I have to stop again, reach out to the client, get the license and insurance information, and then we'll come back to our profile. It took a couple days to get the licenses approved, to get the proof of insurance approved, but everything was accepted by Google. And that is why we are in the live account section. So to get there, you can just open up the menu and if you're still looking for things within the approval process, that'll live within the managed account section. But we're good now, we're live. I don't wanna run through everything within this menu, and I will come back to some of these sections later. But for now, I'm just gonna close out of it. Now, the default date range that I have seen has always been the previous month. So even if I change it to the current month, we see that the stats are still zero. You may also run into this issue. That is because the ads for Google service ads do not launch automatically. We need to handle that ourselves. So while I have it blurred out, you can still see that there's a blue link. That is your account name. So click on your account name, and then you would wanna head down to edit profile. Right now, we see that the ad is paused. That is why nothing is running. So let's turn this on. Again, I apologize that there's so much blurred on the screen, but it's all business information. You can see right under the business name, we are approved. So this green check mark and Google screen text will show up alongside our ads. I'll show you an example later on. You see that stuff that we have blurred out, postal code, phone number, website, license information, that can all be updated within the section. But I'm gonna jump down a little bit more. When we edit your profile, here's where I can adjust my budget. Remember, I started off at the lowest amount that they would allow me to do, thinking about $174 a week. If I see that I start collecting more leads, because that is what I have my bidding mode focused on, and I can confirm that the quality of the leads I'm getting, either from phone calls or messages, has been pretty good. I wanna come back into here and potentially increase the budget. Job types was another section that we filled in when trying to apply. If any of the services that we offer change, whether we're adding or removing them, we would want to adjust it here. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit more. And here we see two sections that weren't necessary to get approved by Google to launch the services ads. The first one is gonna be photos. So you just click on the blue photo link and this can help give an impression of what your business looks like. Similar to a way in your Google business profile, when people find your business on Google Maps, people who've claimed the business can have specific photos uploaded. This is a similar process. And there we see next to photos, here's where you can switch the toggle to turn on messages. And then as you can see, there is a pop-up with a warning. This is pretty much a recommendation by Google saying that you should reply to these messages within 24 hours. The goal is to make sure that you're giving the user a good customer experience. Because in the first sentence, Google says they might display how long it takes for you to reply. And that can affect the conversion rates. Facebook does this a lot too with any Facebook messages. So if you're already running that, very similar. If you're okay with that, hit okay. If you realize that you aren't really responding to the message leads, you're just not paying attention to them, don't have enough time, you can always go back in and turn this setting off. Scrolling down a little bit more, you can confirm the service areas as well as your overall business hours. So now let's head back up to the menu. 
and get a little bit more familiar on some of the things we see in the main navigation. We already talked about live accounts. Everything's approved. You have ads running. You're good to go. That's where everything's going to live. Manage accounts could be ones that you just link. You still have to go through the approval process. That's fine. I still am in the manager account. So this is essentially the MCC for Google local service ads. If you are an agency, you need other team members to manage the accounts. And this is going to look pretty familiar as the Google ads access section. We got users, managers, related managers, and security. If you want to learn more about these settings, you can check out a previous video we did about account access right here. We head back up to the navigation. You can get confirmation about business verification. This is going to look familiar as the setup process. So we have this completed. In our case, we uploaded a couple licenses, but each of those licenses had an expiration date and Google knows this. So it is possible to be unverified if you haven't uploaded an updated license. If anything goes wrong with your billing, say a credit card expires, you'll get that information here. But remember within this account, we already connected our Google account. So we'd have to run back into Google ads and update our billing information and then check back here for business verification to make sure this is updated as well. We're going to have to jump back a little bit later since I just turned the ads on. So then we'll be able to look at leads and reports later. But if we drop down now to reviews, this is just an overview of the reviews that you're getting. You cannot respond to any reviews or comment on them from here. You will have to do this from your main Google business profile. In this case, customer might have a little bit of work to do, both from improving the experience, but also collecting more ratings. We can see the three most recent are still pretty old. That'd be something I would take back to my client and say, okay, what can we do to get more recent ratings and to potentially try to improve our score? Profile and budget, that's exactly where we were to turn the ads on. Billing information, Sorry, I can't show you much here because like I said, ours is managed through Google ads. But if you don't have a Google ads account set up, you're only setting up the local service ads. This is where you would need to go to update your information. I still want to show you the leads and reports section, but I also want to let this campaign run for a little bit so we can get some sort of stats to even show you. So next, I'll show you a few examples provided by Google on how these ads could look in the Google search results. Because I can't show you my actual client examples, I had to pull the ones from Google. And I have a link on the screen right now where you can find these examples if you want to look at them a little bit longer. The first one is perfect though. Someone goes to Google, types in real estate agents near me. This ad pops up. It's got the person's photo, which can help your ad stand out, get more attention, which is why you want to go back into your business settings and add some photos. It's got the name of the business, pulling in the ratings. There's the green check mark that says Google screened. It says open now. And that's where it helps to put in your business hours. If you're not open currently at the moment, Google could show the next time you are open. And then Park City would be the city that you're representing. In this particular local service ad, the only call to action is to call. If you look a little bit to the right of the ad example, we see a kind of faded out one. This is because in this particular ad format, there is a possibility that competitors will show up. Other businesses that are also running local service ads. And if you see right in between the ads and the actual search bar, there's an overall title for Google screened ads and then saying real estate agents serving sand and whatever the city is. So you may or may not be showing up by yourself within this section. Here's just a few more examples showcasing what your ad could look like with or without a photo because it is not always guaranteed to show. I do want to call that out. And it's also showing different ways that the Google guaranteed or Google screened message could appear. And then here's another good example for someone who opted into the messages feature. Again, only available currently in the United States and Canada. So this Palmer Wealth Management example has an image, reviews, shows Google screened. Notice how it doesn't showcase the business hour and city in this example, but this local service ad has both the call, call to action, and then we see the envelope logo for messages. And I can't fully cover this one because my client doesn't use one of these service providers, but you can allow users to book appointments or consultations directly from your local services ad. I have the link on the screen and where you can find this page, but notice this section right here. If you are a service provider, you need to use one of their partners in order to have that book an appointment feature within your local services ad. If you do get a lot of inquiries or you may not be able to use the messages feature as you want and respond within the recommended 24 hours, a third party service like this could make it a lot easier and guarantee a booking. And now through the wonderful magic of editing, let's hop back into the manager account and check out some of the reports and see if we've gotten any leads. It's been a couple days, so I hopped back in the account. So let's run through just a few more things to close this video out. Now we're purposely seeing zeros here. And this is one of the annoying parts about local service ads is that it's always going to be the previous month. 
you can see you can go custom pick whatever date range you want look at the previous month look at the last week or what i'm going to do since we just launched these i'm going to look at this week so there we see there is one lead charged that's going to be for the connected calls but there were three calls overall they're only charging me for the one that was connected we're not using any third-party booking this is a particular service that does not offer bookings so we're not using any of the third-party services we're not using messages here but those would show up in your overall lead charge if you do have it to get a deeper view, go back to your main navigation, and then you can look at reports. You can see once again, they defaulted to the previous month. Kind of annoying. I'm gonna change it to this week again, and there we see what we've been charged for so far for the one lead. We're not gonna have any appointments booked just due to the settings we're running in this particular account. But if I scroll down a little bit, you can see there's gonna be a graph of overall leads within the date range that you have selected. And if I scroll down a little bit more, it gives you some pretty specific information about your leads. Now we're only gonna be able to take phone calls, but the phone number I have blurred out in the first column on the left is the phone number that called our company. And this is the one that was charged if we look at status. It's telling us the lead type. And if you're using any sort of messenger information where you are collecting the user's information, they'll show you the customer name. This is really nice to have because now we can actually see some value on if the quality of the leads coming in are worth it. We're getting it directly from the ad platform, something that you really don't get with regular Google ads campaigns unless you're using the lead form asset. So here we're only showing charged leads and booked appointments. I can change it to any charge status, scroll down a little bit more. And besides the phone number on the bottom, that was the one that was charged. We're seeing that there were two more calls that actually just happened today that were not charged most likely because the calls didn't actually fully go through. And then there's another drop down menu where you can change it to any lead status. And that's pretty much gonna be for your other types of offerings besides phone calls. And that is the bulk of information we get from local services ads. This is definitely the most time I've had to put in making a video for this channel. Just because there are a few steps that require us to wait a little bit before we can get to the next step. If you are in the services industry and you wanna test a new way to get in front of users who need your services, give local services campaign a try. The original local campaigns within Google ads have been rolled into Performance Max, and we've all seen some very mixed performance from that campaign type where this one is pretty controlled and pretty straightforward and even though the approval process might be a little bit longer than you want you will get the google approved status within your ads that makes it look more trustworthy than a regular ad and of course the added benefit of what we're looking at right now you'll be able to see which leads came in from these ads hopefully you already have a crm to look at that information but this is clear cut that we can view right within the channel I know I couldn't walk you through the very specific setup process just because I'm using this on an actual client and I can't show you who it is. So if anything was confusing because I had to blur it out or you're not sure about how this ad works, feel free to ask any question related to local services ads in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.